So Christopher, let's talk a bit about intelligence, right? Because a lot of, of what we're talking about are intelligent skills for how we parent in our children. But we need to understand as well what we mean by intelligence, right? Now, when I was at school, there was basically IQ, my intelligent quotient. In other words, somehow figuring out how my brain functions. Then in the last probably two decades, there's a growing awareness of this thing called emotional intelligence. And everyone then got onto the hobby horse about this and said, oh, we need to find out about emotional intelligence because actually emotional intelligence is far more important than the academic intelligence, especially in a school environment. We haven't yet quite accelerated that, but there's an awareness about that. And out of and, that... And, and long overdue. Correct. Yes, we certainly need to relook at our school systems. And out of that, we're seeing now also an emergence of spiritual intelligence, which is a bit more than just us. It's like, what's, what's beyond that and how do we go and interpret that. So I've heard you speak a bit about those three intelligences, perhaps with different words. Why don't you share those? The logical intelligence, or what you do, IQ, is a very important thing because we need this. The universe in which we live is a place of logic. It's a place that makes sense. It's a place where there's cause and effect. Um, you do something and there's going to be a result. And if we're going to be effective here in this physical world, we need to have a very clear understanding of this logical intelligence, of this IQ, as it's called. Good. But notice that what I've been talking about is the world out there. And what I haven't been talking about is the person who is responsible for that. Now... The person who is responsible for that, you, me, in other, in other words, the human beings, are very much more than simply intelligent. We also have a whole range of energy in motion. And as I said in our last talk, this, this, this too can lead into uh, very interesting discussions about the emotions that course through our body. And when I say emotions, I'm not only talking about feeling sad or glad or happy or joyful or anything. I'm talking about the whole gamut of stuff. Anger, fear, where you're just... We are energy in motion. A very interesting word, that. And of course, for me, that who believes so strongly in the magic of language, it's no accident. And it's e-motion. That's what we are. Uh, from a purely scientific point of view, right now as I sit here, I am several billions of atoms and molecules and quarks and protons and neutrons and electrons and things all roaring around in, in an apparently chaotic fashion, producing order. It's energy in motion. Now, unless we start to develop an understanding of that, that we are emotional beings, that we are very much part and parcel of that emotional universe. And the trick is not to make yourself a victim of that. In other words, don't make yourself a victim of your anger. Don't make yourself a victim of your fear. But learn the skills, the tricks, the techniques of how to take charge and manage that. Can this be done? Yes, it can be done. Is it tricky? Yes. Is it something that we need to teach our children from day one? Day one, uh, it's part of the huge task that is incumbent upon a parent is to teach a child how to manage its emotions. Not to put them down, not to make them wrong, but how to manage them to produce a better result for the child. Spiritual intelligence is not superior to the others. As I said, it's the three-legged stool upon which we sit in life. And a three-legged stool, each leg, one is as important as the other. Now, when you start to come into the realm of spiritual intelligence, now you start to venture into the realm of the self. Who is experiencing these emotions? Who is working with this logic? What am I? Who am I? When I talk about I, what am I actually talking about? When I talk about me, what am I actually talking about? In this conversation that you and I are having, who is talking to whom? What's actually going on here? And the wonder of this for me is, again, there is no answer. There are some mysteries in life that I don't think we are meant to solve. 
all that we can do, and it goes back to what we were talking about in another discussion, is strive. And this is the striving. I need to work, and work it is. I need to work, and work hard, at developing an awareness of who and what I am. Can you inflict this upon a child? I don't think so. The very first thing that you must teach a child is the logical intelligence. That if he sticks a screwdriver into a socket plug, all sorts of rather unpleasant things are going to happen. And that if he drops a brick upon his toe, it's not going to be very nice. This is the logical intelligence of the cause and effect in the universe. As that goes, you can start to introduce some instruction into the world of emotional intelligence. But I have an idea that the question of what you might call spiritual intelligence must wait a bit. We talk about the age of majority and we class it as 21. Well, 3 times 7 is 21, the old Platonic number, the Shakespearean number of the seven ages of man. And I think that the development of spiritual intelligence cannot sensibly be undertaken until certainly the age of 21, and I'm not even sure that it can be undertaken then. I think that you need to have undertaken some of the experience some of the hard knocks of life before you can now start the, the difficult, time-consuming process of looking inwards and saying, who am I?